Hello and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today we are going to derive the sum and difference formulas. In this video specifically we're going to start with the sum and difference formulas for cosine. So that would be the cosine of u minus v and the cosine of u plus v formulas. All of the sum and difference formulas are very, very useful and foundational to analytic trigonometry. They are used to derive many more useful formulas down the road. And here are those two formulas. Cosine of u minus v. So these u's and v's represent two different angles. So this equals the cosine of u times the cosine of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. And then the cosine of the sum of two different angles, u and v, is equal to the cosine of u times the cosine of v minus the sine of u times the sine of v. Now this proof is quite this derivation rather is quite laborious so hang on to your hats ladies and gentlemen we're in for a long ride but the outcome is quite nice so let's begin in order to set up the proof of cosine u minus v I'm going to use the unit circle and if you're new to trigonometry the unit circle is the basis for trigonometry in general the unit circle is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin of the Cartesian coordinate plane and uh, we are going to define four points on the unit circle. A will be here, B will be somewhere in the first quadrant, C will be somewhere in the second quadrant, and D will be somewhere in the third quadrant. Now these positions are absolutely arbitrary except for A, however it is useful to give each one its own quadrant with A at the positive x-axis. Now, if A is at the positive x-axis, its value, its coordinates are 1, 0. Okay. Now, angle B, excuse me, point B is at a certain place. Okay. In, in trigonometry, we define our angles from the positive x-axis, and we're going to call this angle V. Okay. Rotating from this line, positive x-axis, to point B. And B will also have coordinates, which are arbitrary. I'm going to call them x, 1, y, 1. Some x, comma y value. Next, I'm going to come over here all the way to D. If I rotate all the way to D, I'm going to call that angle U. And these are the exact angles from the formula we're trying to derive. Okay. D, I'm going to give the coordinates x3, y3. You'll see why I skipped y2 in a second, and x2. That is where point C comes in. Point C is going to be the location of the following angle, u minus v. See how it's less than u, but bigger than v, based on how I defined it. So that's where angle u minus v ends up. Now, C has coordinates of x2, comma, y2. Okay, so we've set up our unit circle. We've defined the four, really three, angles that we need and the four points we need. Now it's time to discuss something very interesting. Two arcs in particular, arc AC and arc um, BD. I want you to look at arc AC and arc BD. Arc AC, its measure is just angle U minus V. Okay, if you look at that, we go from A to C, that's an angle U minus V. Now, if you look at the arc from B to D, well, we would have to, since we don't have our starting place as a point of reference here, well, we do, but not, it's not involved in points B and D specifically. The difference between point D and point B would be this. U, angle U for D, and then we just subtract off this portion, which is V. Notice how these two arcs have the same angle measure. So that means the measure of arc A, C, here I am using geometry lingo, is equal to the measure of arc B, D. Now what I mean for that is the angles specifically. Now I have something else to show you that is um, 
direct result of this. And that is these two chords here. The chord from A to C and the chord from B to D. I'm going to highlight those with solid lines. These two chords must be congruent, meaning they have equal measure. And that follows directly from the arcs chords conjecture. If we have two arcs, arc BD and arc CA, that are congruent, then the chords that connect those two endpoints for the arcs are also congruent. So this means that the measure of chord AC is equal to the measure of chord BD. Now these chords are line segments, and these line segments have a certain distance. And we will find that distance using the distance formula. Recall that the distance formula in general takes the square root of the difference in the x values of the two points in question at the ends of your line segment. And you add to that the difference in the y coordinates squared. Okay, this is a use of the Pythagorean theorem. You've seen it in my other videos if you've checked my channel before. Now we are going to apply the distance formula to our two chords. So one way to write the measure of chord AC will be this. Okay. I'm going to treat point C as my second point and point A as my first point in this formula. So the measure of arc AC using the distance form, excuse me, chord AC using the distance formula will be x2 minus 1 squared plus y2 minus 0 squared. Similarly, I have an expression for the measure of chord BD using the same distance formula. This will be x3, I'm treating d as the second point, minus x1 squared plus y3, excuse me if that doesn't look like a 3, that's what I meant, y3 minus y1 squared. Now here's the thing, these two chords are equal to each other, so these two expressions are equal to each other. But you know what's not nice are these square roots. So I'm going to set them equal to each other, and when I do that, I'm going to square both sides so that the square roots are gone. This is totally valid. And so we have x2 minus 1 squared plus, now I no longer need to write the 0 because y2 minus 0 is just y2 squared. That is equal to the other side, this other radical, after it's been squared, it's equal to x3 minus x1 squared plus y3 minus y1 squared. Now our final uh, mode of attack is to simplify this here equation and that's what we're going to do next. Alright, so we must begin this process by foiling all of these binomials. Yes, it gets quite long. This first binomial, we will have the first term squared, x2 squared, minus the product of the two terms doubled. So that's minus 2x2 two times 1. So I don't need to write the 1. Then I'm going to have the second term squared. So it'll be plus 1. Then I will tag along the y2 squared. I don't need to do anything to that. Now the other side. Two foiling operations must occur. I'm going to have x3 squared minus the product of the two terms doubled. 2x3, x1, plus x1 squared. And I'm going to write the second one, which has the same form as this, but with y's instead, because it's identical otherwise. Okay, here we are. Now, the next step is to combine a few things together. And that would be the squares of like components. So the x2 and the y2 we will bring together, the x3 and the y3 squared we will bring together, and the x1 squared and the y1 squared we will bring together and put in parentheses. We're just grouping right now, really. 
So that's x2 squared plus y2 squared minus 2x2 plus 1. Okay, and then we're going to group together x cubed, x, uh, excuse me, x3 squared and y3 squared. Notice how they're all positive. And then we've got x1 squared and y1 squared. And then we have two other terms, minus 2x3, x1, minus 2y3, y1. Okay, now you might think that the parts I squared are the more useful parts. Actually, it's the other ones. It's the x2, the x3, x1, and the y3, y1. You will see why very shortly. Let's talk about something when we look back at our figure our wonderful unit circle. Point A, point B, point C, point D. All of these points have what distance from the origin? If it's the unit circle, that distance is 1 for each of those. Now what does that mean for us? Well, let's look at B. B was x1, comma y1. C was x2, comma, y2, and D was x3, comma, y3. Here's the thing. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, for example, B, x squared 1 plus y squared 1 is like a squared plus b squared equals c squared for this particular right triangle. So that means x squared 1 plus y squared 1 is equal to 1. The same argument follows for all these other points. What I'm finding now is really the square of the distance to them from the origin. Square of 1 is also 1. So now I can replace all of these long squared sums with 1. So now I have 1 minus 2x2 plus 1 equals negative 2x3. Oh, excuse me. I forgot to write the 1s. 1 plus 1 minus 2x3, x1 minus 2y3, y1. Okay, great. Now I'm going to see the following. I have two ones on this side, and I have two ones on this side. There's no need for those extra ones. I can cancel a pair of ones on each side. So now I have negative 2x2 equals negative 2x3, x1 minus 2y3, y1. Notice how I'm emphasizing those negative 2s. Every term is multiplied by negative 2. Guess what you're allowed to do? You are allowed to cancel a factor of every term on both sides. So now we have a very, very simplified formula. x2 equals x3, x1, plus y3, y1. Now I'm going to show you how this relates back to the cosine u minus v formula. All we have to do now to finish this is realize how these simple terms relate back to our unit circle. Specifically x2. Let's start with that. We said that ang uh, point c was an angle u minus v mapping. And so that means that the x value, if we remember how our sine and cosine values are defined on the unit circle, our x2 value is actually equal to the cosine of the angle that got us to that point. So x2 is actually equal to cosine u minus v. Aha! Now I think you see where I'm going with this. x3, let's talk about this right here x3, that was angle u to that point d, so x3 will be the cosine of u. x1, let's look at x1, which maps to here, that was angle v. So x1 is the cosine of v. Now let's talk about y3. y3 is the y value for point d, that means it is the sine of angle u. So y3 is the sine of angle u, and y1 
by the same method will be the sine of angle V. We have just gotten to the cosine U minus V formula. Excellent work. If you followed along, congratulations. Feel free to rewind certain parts of the video if you're having trouble at certain steps. The laborious part is finished. Now it's time to use this formula to prove the cosine U plus V formula. It's a very deceptive and tricky method we're going to use. We are going to say that the cosine of u plus v is deceptively but truly equal to the cosine of u minus negative v. So really what we're going to do is take this and replace it here. I'm going to replace the v specifically with negative v and follow it through the formula and see how things change. So if that's what we're doing we have the cosine of u minus negative v according to the formula we just proved that is equal to the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle which is now negative v plus the sine of the first angle excuse me don't need parentheses there times the sine of the second angle negative v now we're going to simplify this so that we don't have cosine or sine of a negative v Recall that cosine is an even function. All even functions, when you plug in a negative value instead of a positive value, you return the same exact value uh, as if you had plugged in the positive version. So that means cosine of negative v is equal to the cosine of positive v. So we can rewrite that as cosine u cosine v, which is identical so far to what we had before. Now sine is an odd function. So when I plug in negative values into it, I will get a negative version of the same thing I'd plug in, I'd find if I plugged in a positive value of the same magnitude. That means that sine negative v is equal to negative of the sine of v. So we're gonna have sine u times negative sine v sine is odd. Now this looks a little annoying and so what we do is we move the negative out in front because the negative does work through the entire product. So we have cosine u cosine v minus sine u times sine v. This is equal to cosine. If we go all the way back to the beginning of our small derivation here cosine of u plus v. Now we have the formulas for the cosine of u minus v and the cosine of the u plus v. Congratulations for making it through this with me. We have finished the proof and the derivation. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two of this video in which we derive the sum and difference formulas for the other trig functions. As for now, this is Falconator signing out.